Hi, welcome to another tutorial on 2D game design in Unity. In this tutorial, I'm going to um, continue on from where we left off. So in the previous tutorials, we looked at how to set up a fall detector uh, underneath the player so we can um, detect when the player falls off the map or off a platform. Um, so like a death zone or fall detector. And we also added some checkpoints so we could check um, well, so we can um, <clears throat> reach certain points in the game and then um, if we fall off the map we can respawn back to that last uh, checkpoint. So that's what we're going to do in, in this tutorial is look at how to actually set up the respawning. Um, so one thing that I have um, just changed is on the uh, fall detector on the box collider attached to that fall, uh, fall detector object I've just made it a bit wider just to make sure that when we fall that the um, fall detector is always going to be underneath the player to um, catch them. Okay, so I've just made it a bit wider. Also make sure that on your checkpoint uh, prefab, so in my prefabs folder I've got the checkpoint object. Um, make sure that you've given it the tag checkpoint created a tag called checkpoint and assigned that tag to the prefab so that each instance of your checkpoint has that same tag, okay? All right, so if we play this, let's just have a look. Okay, so we can reach these different checkpoints. The flag turns green, um, but what happens when we fall off? Nothing happens, so we haven't set up the respawning yet. That's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to go to the scripts folder and I'm going to open up the player controller script. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a new variable. All right, and it's going to be a public variable. And it's going to be a vector three. And we'll call it respawn point. One word like that. Okay, and what this, um, what this variable is going to be used for is it will store the position of the respawn point, so where the player is going to respawn to. Okay, and we're going to set the respawn point every time we reach a checkpoint. So if we scroll down here to the bottom of the code, here's some code that we added earlier on, earlier on in one of the previous tutorials. So what we're doing here is this script, the player controller script, is attached to the player object. So we're basically detecting when the player enters um, a trigger or uh, another collider with a trigger. And we're detecting when that other um, collider is has the tag fall detector or when the other object with the collider has fall detector. So in other words, we're checking when the player, oops, when the player falls and hits another object with a collider that's tagged fall detector. So this fall detector object has the tag fall detector. So we detect that, but we haven't actually specified what will happen there if that occurs yet. And we'll do that in just a moment. But firstly, we're going to add another if statement. And we're going to say if other dot tag is equal to, so two equal signs, checkpoint. So if the other collider has a tag of checkpoint, make sure we spell that exactly the same as the tag name. Then we can add our curly brackets here. Then respawn point will be set to, so respawn point equals other dot transform dot position. Okay, and what that basically means is when we collide with a checkpoint, so when our player moves along in this world and reaches a checkpoint, the respawn point for the player will be set to the position of the checkpoint. Okay, and we keep moving, we hit this checkpoint, the respawn point again will be updated to be the position of this checkpoint. So whenever we reach a checkpoint, the respawn point will be set to the position of that checkpoint. And it does that by checking what is the player colliding with? Is it the check, does it have a tag of checkpoint? And if it does have the tag checkpoint, then update the respawn point to be the position of that other object, which is the checkpoint. Okay, so that's the first thing. So, um, that's what's going to um, 
that's what's going to happen when we reach a checkpoint, the respawn point will be updated. Now what we need to do is say when we fall and hit the fall detector and collide with that, then we change the position of the player, transform.position, to be equal to the respawn point. Okay, so we'll just make the position of the player equal to the last respawn point. Okay, so let's save that and let that compile. And now we'll go and run the game. And so we'll just go along and reach the first checkpoint. Okay, so flag goes green. So we've reached that checkpoint. Now, what happens if we fall here? We respawn back to that checkpoint. So as soon as we fall down, and what I might do is just step through. Oops, so I'll play it. Um, but as soon as I fall off, I'll just pause. Okay, there we go. So pause. I'll just step through here. And I'll click on the fall detector so that we can see where that is. I'll just step through. Keep clicking. See what happens. Alright, as soon as we hit this fall detector, we're respawned back to the flag. Okay, so let's run that again. Okay, so reach that checkpoint, we'll fall, respawn back to that checkpoint. Now, when I reach this checkpoint, I should respawn to that checkpoint. And there we go. Cool. All right, but what happens if I start this game and never actually reach a checkpoint? So I go and run along, whoops, run along and I never actually make the jump here and reach that checkpoint, I just fall. Well, what happens is I do respawn back onto the platform, but if you notice when I started the game, I was over to the left side over here. So I was actually all the way over here, but, I somehow respawned to somewhere over here. So let's have a look at that again. We'll fall here, and I respawn over here, even though I started the game over here. All right, and the reason why that's happening is because, let's play this again. If we have a look at the, um, where are we? Have a look at the player. Scroll down to the player controller script. The respawn point is initially set to X0, Y0, and Z0, which happens to be over here somewhere and not over here. All right, so if we play this game, let's just go back to the player, to that script, uh, oops, that script so we can see the respawn point. Click back in here. We'll play this game. All right, and we'll watch the respawn point get updated. So just watch these values here change as we hit the flag. All right, so there we go. The respawn point is now X21 and Y minus 0.63. So that's the position of this flag. And we hit this other flag over here. The respawn point changes again. Now it's X37.17. Okay, but before we hit any of those checkpoints, the respawn, respawn point is just X0, Y0, and Z0, which is around this area here. All right, so what we need to actually do is set the initial respawn point before we reach any of the checkpoints to be the position of where the player, uh, the, uh, res the position of the player when they start the game. And that's pretty simple. It's really only one line of code. So let's go back to the player controller script. And what we'll do is we'll go to the start method. So this is the section of code that loads once, as soon as the game begins. And what we'll do is we'll set the respawn point here to initially be equal to the position of the player when the game loads. So as soon as the game loads, the respawn point will be set to the position of the player when the game has just loaded. Okay, so it will do that as soon as the game loads. 
Let's save that and run it again. And now when I fall off, I should respawn back to my original position when I started the game. And do it again over here and I respawn back to here. But when I reach a checkpoint, I should respawn to that checkpoint now. Okay, cool. So that's great. So respawning is working. What we'll do now in the next tutorial is look at, so what happens when I am running around and maybe in the future I'll have a whole heap of platforms here and different things to avoid. And I might jump and fall, but I respawn so quickly that I don't actually get a chance to see what went wrong, what I did wrong and work out a strategy um, or how I can do that right the next time I play. So I don't actually get a chance because as soon as I fall down there, I quickly respawn back up here and I don't get to see what went wrong. So what we can do is actually add a delay so we can go and see what I did wrong before I'm respawned back to that point. And we'll look at that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.